this mason jar that I have here. This is a, um, a moonshine mason jar. I think it's Old Smoky because it has the S there. So if you're looking for to get some of these amber jars, it's the Old Smoky Moonshine, I believe. Uh, it may be limited time too. I don't, I don't really know much about that, but um, I saw this and I just love the color. Great for fall, great for any time really, but it has a regular mason jar cap on it and I want to change it out. I got these from Dollar Tree. I don't know if you've seen these before. I had never seen these before that I remember anyway. Uh, they are decorative jar lids. So that's what these are from Dollar Tree. So I thought I am going to use these for something. Now these would be great for if you have potpourri, you want to put some scented stuff in there, it's going to let that smell out. But these also can be used for flower frogs. So you can put these on the top, which is what I'm going to do, and add flowers in there and it will hold them in so it makes a nice floral display or whatever you choose to use with it greenery or whatever um, but it's a little too new for the jar so we're gonna be doing some full rusting on this so we're gonna set that aside now for my jar I like the amber color but I also wanted a really cool um, label to put on it and when I was looking at it I was thinking I think a honey label would be kind of fun on this jar so I got playing around with one of my creative um, like where I make my thumbnails and everything I think it's called Adobe uh, and so I just started playing around with this and thought that it was kind of cool I got bees and sunflowers and honeycomb and uh, just a simple little label that I thought would be cool. So this was printed right off my printer paper, uh, right off my regular printer uh, with printer paper. Now you could use rice paper, I mean you could use tissue paper, you could use whatever you want. This is just regular paper. I made these little corners here. I thought that would make it interesting. I don't know, I was just playing around and sometimes, sometimes you come up with some good stuff. So I'll try to link this onto my Etsy shop if anybody's interested in uh, printing this out. I can't remember the size. Give me a second and I will, or actually I'll just pop it up. All right, so it's four and a half inches tall and about four and three quarter inches wide on the on the label. So what I did, because when you print off the printer, it um, once you get it wet, it can run the colors. I sprayed it with my clear Rust-Oleum matte sprayer. So it's a clear coat over the top of that. So when I get this wet, it won't it won't one it won't run the colors. So I did give that a nice spray, took it outside and sprayed it down. So what we're gonna do is take our Mod Podge. Maybe that was stuck down. And because I don't I don't want to get any of the Mod Podge on the jar itself if I can help it. I'm going to try and put it on the back of my label instead and then apply that to the jar, hopefully.
Okay, so I'm gonna take some black paint and paint my lid. I'll do a coat, let it dry, and then I'll put a second coat on. And then we'll add some of my grubby mix to give it a rusty look. Okay, there's one coat, and we're gonna let that dry. Now we're gonna put a second coat on. And while the paint's still wet, we're just gonna take our grubby mix and sprinkle it on. And I'm okay if some of the parts and pieces don't have stuff on it. You can put more on there if you want to, but I like some of the black showing through. Now, while I'm waiting for my lid to dry, I'm gonna do a coat of Mod Podge over the top of my label to get that sealed in. I'm gonna to try to keep it just on the paper, on the label, as much as I can and not get it on the jar. pretty well dry. I'm going to take just a little bit of black wax and just go over the edges. Just going to darken it up a little bit. If you haven't yet and you're enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the bell next to it, YouTube will notify you anytime that I upload a fun and inspiring video. Give it a little age. I'm going to gently wipe it back. And we'll put a little bit in the middle too. I must get a little paint there. I wonder where I would have got that. I have it like all over me. Doing multiple projects, you know. All right, so this just gives it a little bit of age around the edges. I didn't really age up this when I printed it out or before I printed it. So I wanna give it a little bit of age. Just a little hint. Because people may be handling this a lot, I'm going to seal it with Mod Podge. I um, showed you in the last project where I used just some sealer, some spray sealer, which is fine, but that's for decor that won't be probably touched. This, people may, um, you know, want to take it off and actually put real flowers in it. So we we'll want to make it so they can actually touch the jar and, and do all that. Unscrew it without the stuff coming off it. So we're just going to seal it up. I mean, people may not use it for that, but just in case, you never know. There we go. Then we'll let that dry, and then we will add some flowers and decorate this jar up a little bit. All right, I've got a few different flowers here, some Black Eyed Susans. I've got some raffia that I wanna put it down inside which I probably should do that first before I put my cover on. Here's my pretty much dried, maybe a little, I don't know, I think it's pretty dry. Uh, it didn't take very long. I set it in the sun. It goes pretty quick, but I love the rusty look of that. And then look at that on the jar. Oh, I just love it. 
Love it. And that really pretty little label. Okay, so we're going to put this stuff in. Just going to do a little raffia down inside just to give it something to bounce off, you know, everything. So when you look at it, you've just got all these colors. You also could put some little rice lights in there. That would look pretty cool. I don't know. Just gives it, makes it look more full. Um, let's see, I've got these. I've got this. I've got this. And these. So let's see. looking for some rusty goodness look at these sifters look at them nice wooden handle on this one nice wooden handle and like a light or an old red color and look at all the rust and patina I don't know where I got these but they are fantastic there was no tag on them so who knows if I thrifted them picked them up at the free area no idea, but look, look at all the rust, scratches, the patina on these are great. And they still work if you wanted to use them. This one's a little banged up around the edges, but I love it. Two different sizes, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. The gauge is more heavier on this one. This one's lighter, but still beautiful, beautiful patina on these, love them. So we're gonna do a little vignette with these, uh, or at least one of them, I'm not sure exactly if I have enough stuff, but I'm gonna dig around and see what I can find. I did pick from my labels that I have on Etsy. I have six of them, I believe, is it six? Uh, and they, I printed it on a music sheet. So I think one of these I wanna cut down a little bit and stick it on the, on the front. The other one I just may leave plain and just wrap some material around it. Once I got it all cut out and tore the way I wanted, I have a little bit of antique wax on my brush. So I'm just taking that and going around the edges. Where I ripped it, it has a nice dark look to it once you put that antique wax on. Makes it look a little bit old and aged. So I also went into the picture a little bit to give it a little age as well. 
So then I added some Mod Podge to the back of my paper and I'm gonna add that to my sifter. I paid special attention to the edges to make sure that everything was stuck down and the ribs on the side of the sifter stuck out a little bit so I made sure that my, my little label would contour around those ridges and make that stick out a little bit. And I thought that I would in, accentuate, accentuate, whatever the word is, uh, accentuate, I think it is, the uh, ribs on there and add some antique wax and give them a little bit of an aged look as well. Once that wax was sitting for a while and dried, I took the Mod Podge and went over my label only, made sure again that I got around my edges that they were stuck down really well and gave the whole thing a nice seal coat. Now it's time for the inside items that I'm gonna put in it. And I found a bunch of wooden spoons and spatulas and stuff like that. So I thought that I would put those in. I thought that would make it look really cool in the sifter. So these two here are just raw wood. So I decided I would use my antique wax as a stain and put that right over the top of that and then wipe it back. So both of those got that uh, treatment, got a little stain on there. And then I wanted it to look more aged, so I took the those stained ones and added some black wax to them to give them a little bit of a aged look. I think this really worked well. Just run around the edges and then my worked my way inside, you know, into the middle, but I wanted to make it look uh, like it had been around for years and years and years, and I think it looked really good. Now these that are stained, I'm going to do the opposite with, and I'm going to paint them uh, completely black. While they're still damp, I'm going to take my uh, just a rag and wipe back some of that paint so some of it is dry and it's stuck on there and the rest of it that did not stick is coming off and it looks very distressed very worn I love this look and um, I haven't done it in a really long time and I feel like I need to do this more often because I really like this look so I hit it with the heat tool for just a second to dry it a little bit and make sure more of the paint would stick. And then I just wiped it back, there you go. Those came out so cool. So now I'm going to add these to my, my sifters. So I just picked out a few each that I wanted to put in. I have this doily that was ripped already. So I cut it in half so that I can use half each for uh, each sifter. So I, I folded it put it over the side, and then I have this candle ring that I thought would look really good in there, and I added that to the inside of the sifter so the greenery would come out. Then I'm gonna just add my painted tools that I have, my wooden tools, and some other things that I found. I also found a rusty something or other, I don't even know what it is. Pretty sure I found it at the dump in the metal pile and I've had it kicking around, so it looks kind of like a key. It's got little wing nuts on the end of it, and uh, it's a bolt, though, of some sort. So anyway, I thought that would look really good in there, and then I added some of my Sweet Annie around, which I think softens everything up even more, and also smells really good. And that is going to be that one. The other sifter is going to be about the same as far as decoration. Of course, the doily and then the little wooden tools that I have painted up and stained up. And then I'm going to add some greenery, loose greenery, instead of the candle greenery, candle ring. I only had one of those, so we're going to just use these. And I think they were from probably a garland or something. I like to buy those whole and then pull off pieces that I need. So I'm going to add a few of those. And then I add my little sunflower and some more Sweet Annie. 
The only difference here is I'm going to show you I have some grubby stars that I got from Dollar Tree. They're, uh, they weren't grubby when I got them. They were just regular stars out of a little package. And I grubbied them up and added a skewer to them so that I could add them to my little displays. And I think this is a really cute touch to these. And then I also add a, a little pumpkin to one of them to give it a fall feel. Or you could take it out and this could be an all year decor piece for your home. With this project, we're going to do a marriage of a few different items that I have. This happens when you repurpose and upcycle a lot of items. They, you know, thrifted items get uh, married together quite often. You don't really think about it, but uh, you find things and you're like, geez, I could do this and this together and it would look really cool. So I have this round piece of, I don't know, I guess it's a cutting board that's been painted I don't know it came to me this way I think it was four dollars from Goodwill and then I think I got this at the free shack it was a Christmas uh, wreath and I just took all the decor pieces off it there was heavy glue on it so here I am just melting it down and then cutting off the pieces that I can I did save some of the decor that was on this, but it was pretty ragged looking. And I really love, in the primitive style, I really love these twig wreaths. And I think they look great as a centerpiece uh, around a candle or, or a vignette or something like that. So I thought it would look great. It seemed like it fit on this, this board. And then I have this great big strainer and it's just nice and rusty and just awesome so and it fits right over that hole really good so I have these little uh, crows they're little plastic crows I got in a box from I think from Amazon I'll link it down below if I did I'm pretty sure it's a little box of them that you get like six or seven of them in a box and I use them most of them all except for two and this is one of them and I thought this would be a great uh, little knob per se for the top of my, well, we're going to call this a cloche now. Uh, so this marriage is a board from Goodwill, um, a strainer and some twi a twig wreath from probably the Free Shack and a crow from Amazon. And I think they all go together really well. So inside you can decorate it however you want. You can decorate it for the holidays. You can decorate it for every day. We're going to do just every day with this, but it's so easy to change it up for the holidays. You could add pumpkins around the outside. You could add little orange fairy lights or something like that. Or <clears throat> for the fall and Halloween time, you could also in the Christmas time, you could add pine cones and little white fairy lights or blue or green or red or whatever you decide. Uh, you can add little trees inside and a little vignette of a little scene of winter or something. Uh, so this can be used for so many things. This is a prim look. Uh, the crow I think could go for any time honestly uh, for the prim look as well. And so I just used a little bit of the stained material that I had and a candle that I had and I put that in there and I think it looks perfect for a prim home. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite or what you would do differently with them. 
Don't forget, if you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell for future videos. And don't forget to check out my Etsy shop where you can purchase some of my handmade items. Did you know that Repurposed My Way has an Etsy shop called Pit Berries and Burlap? Yep, I do. And I've got all kinds of different things on here that you might be interested in. Items for crafting, home decoration, junk journaling, scrapbooking, and all kinds of things in between. So make sure you check out Pit Berries and Burlap. I'll have a link down in the description.